welcome to your August 18th full moon reading, Virgos. This one is uh, given to you uh, through spirit channeled through the goddess Nidaba of Egypt. Um, the goddess Nidaba uh, is perhaps the earliest incarnation of Mercury in the West. Um, hardly seldom remembered uh, it was not she herself who was the virgin. Her daughter was the virgin who carried her grain for her uh, to the people. But she was the great mother goddess, fecund and full of children, um, limitless uh, with her love and nurturing in ancient Egypt. Um, so uh, let us channel and ask Mercury the planet Mercury and its energies uh, through its uh, manifestations of Nidaba, of Mercury, the fleet-footed winged messenger of the gods, of uh, all sorts of various um, deities symbolizing the harvest and grain of the earth to guide us now while we do this reading. My name is Dudamkar and you can reach me at dudamkar23 at gmail.com. I accept PayPal and I also have a donation for uh, Patreon. On to your reading. Cardamom is the spice associated with Virgo. If you've ever chewed cardamom, it's a mini uh, wonderful mouth candies for after dinner in India. Cardamom seeds. Any kind of crunchy foods are the foods of Virgo. So um, if you've ever had kohlrabi, uh, it's wonderfully crunchy and cool on summer days. Um, if you've ever had some other ones. Um, of course, carrots. The carrots come in all different colors. They come in other colors besides orange. You can get purple and yellow and little baby carrots, all kinds of wonderful things if you look. Particularly like um, this, if you have sun, moon, or rising in Virgo, you probably know this already, but you can get heritage seed catalogs and then plant all kinds of unusual crunchy vegetables that will nourish your soul. Um, any kind of tiny water wildflower for the most part. It's also kind of a Virgo thing, especially if it's golden. Golden ones, purple ones, forget-me-nots in particular. Very sweet and Virgo. Virgo the Virgin is also based on the Greek goddess um, of spring, Persephone. Um, but the goddess of harvest, uh, pardon me, uh, Demetria, is it? So, um, yes, Demeter, Demetria, um, takes a moment, recall. Okay, so let us. We're talking about, you know, a lot of the same energetic information energies that we find with Gemini. However, in this, in Virgo, it comes through our food. This information, this, this channeling from generation to generation. We wake things up through our food, through what gives us nourishment, just like Nidaba gave nourishment to all of her children, no matter how many she had. Just like Mother Earth gives us our nourishment, just like the Holy Mother, Our Lady of Guadalupe, she gives salvation to all who light a candle and pray to her. She guides people across rivers and deserts, just like the goddess of Shun and her beauty for providing 
material goods to the peoples of Africa and the Caribbean and those who ask for her assistance. So, all of these mothers have something in common. They love to feed people. That is a beautiful thing. This is you. These are the things that cross you. This is what's on your mind. This is what's in your past. This is what's in your far past. This is your hopes and dreams for the future. This is your feelings in the future. This is your environment. This is your feelings currently. This is your goal. So, what we have going on here is we have an entire line of reversals here, which is very unusual. And so I feel compelled to turn them over um, and, and read them upright. Uh, I tend to do this if, if there is a market pattern like that or if the majority of cards are reversals. Okay. Pardon me. Bad habit. Now, your present position Four of Clubs, one of my favorite cards of all time. So it's this couple, and they're by a rainbow, and they have a dacha, and this is a sweet and innocent love, um, a, a positive thing. Now this this could be any couple, um, not necessarily romantic, but it it speaks of romance, society, harmony. Newly acquired prosperity, tranquility, the fruits of labor, and rest after strife. So you are in a good space, Virgo. This is your your coming into your time uh, in the the celestial year. So uh, enjoy your happy birthday. Crossing you, the high priestess. There she is, represented by Saint Olga. Now with the High Priestess, it says, equal to the Apostles, Grand Duchess of Kiev, one of the first in Russia, it was the first in Russia to accept the Eastern Orthodox faith from the Byzantines in 957. The three-barred Russian cross adorns her chest and she blesses with her right hand and holds a scroll in her left hand. The lion supports the throne and symbolizes the paganism of the tribes of ancient Russia. The red cloth emphasizes coming changes. In 30 years, Olga's grandson, St. Duke Vladimir, will have baptized all the Russian people, helping to uni unify the Slavic tribes. In the upright position, it speaks of wisdom, sound judgment, common sense, serenity, objectivity, penetration, foresight, intuition, perception, self-reliance, emotionlessness, platonic relationships, so you have found yourself in a very good relationship. You're um, where you're at right now in your life. You're feeling comfortable with it. You're not feeling pressured in any way by your relationship at this point. Um, you are in a comfortable and healthy headspace, whether you're Virgo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. What is on your head, mind then in this time? Oh, we have a reversal of the king of coins on your mind. So, the king of coins is usually someone who knows what they're about, but in this case it's corruption, using any means to achieve the desired end vice, avarice, unfaithfulness, 
an old and vicious man, peril thriftlessness. So, you are concerned about um, not becoming who you do not want to become. This concerns you. You do not want to be like someone who has been a major influence in your life. You, you've decided that you're going to state how you are different and make yourself become a better version of yourself, your highest version of yourself, as some people say. So in the reverse, in the short term, we have the reverse of the two of clubs. And the two of clubs is usually that you have choices. Uh, reversed meaning is sadness, trouble, restraint caused by others, a loss of faith, surprise. So, if something happened, suddenly you got a call, um, and you had to cancel a trip that you really wanted to take, or you had to make a change of plans all of a sudden, and, um, you thought that you had found yourself, for the most part, at the end of a long journey, and you really knew your inner self, and you'd really made peace with things, um, and then all of a sudden things were turned upside down by this phone call or this email, and now uh, you're expected to change things. Uh, this has led you to a crisis of faith for a moment. Um, and then you've settled down and it's just turned into surprise. It's like, wow, you never know what's going to happen, right? Well, um, something in the short term recently did. Um, and it's, it's concerning you as the king of coins, it's concerning you. However, uh, your current position is a positive one in life. In your distant past, you have the wheel of fortune which is a very karmic and destiny-oriented uh, card. Of course, it's part of the major arcana, so it holds quite a bit of power um, when it makes its presence known. It is the wheel of karma. It is also the wheel of fortune. It is. There are many, many wheels. In fact, chakras are wheels. That's what chakra means. So, um, in the case of the wheel of fortune or the wheel of destiny an angel an eagle a lion and a bull all winged surround the wing wheel of fortune a serpent is below and a lion with a man's head guards the top so also known as the sphinx which is secrets uh, the Kundalini snake is at the base of the spine, uh, and it is flocked on all four sides by the gospel mascots of Mark, Mark, uh, Luke, <coughs> Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, um, the Wheel of Fortune speaks of destiny, fortune, fate, outcome, culmination, approaching the end of a problem, good or bad luck. Depending on influences of nearby cards, inevitability, the wheel suggests the course of events from beginning to end, advancement for better or worse. So time marches on, uh, things have changed, this two of clubs came up, so uh, sudden events had to happen and knocks you a bit off course, but, you know, you are, you are having to reschedule some things and shift some things around, but you can do that. It's just preyed on your mind a bit, but that doesn't really change that you have this wonderful relationship or female influence in your life and this beautiful home in your future. Uh, you're experiencing this, this time of abundance, and your hopes and dreams for the future is the page of clubs. Pages always represent teenagers or young people. 
They also can represent messengers and Mercury, of course. So it's appropriate that it should be in the place of your wishes, hopes, and dreams for future and destiny overall. The clubs Page of Clubs is a faithful and loyal person, an envoy, an emissary, a trusted friend, a stranger with good intentions, a consistent person, a bearer of important news. So, whatever you're look, you are currently hoping to perhaps meet other people um, who are spreading a similar message or who are thinking about similar things in a similar way to yourself. You are on a journey of enlightenment, of bettering yourself and your health, your entire outlook of exploration and transcendence into the unknown realms and upper dimensions, and you uh, um, are ready to meet the rest of your soul family and your friends, um, to bring them on board, to, to share this with the world. Um, this this solidity that you found in your your home life. Um, this doesn't mean that you don't experience um, some ups and downs as as things happen. We have to have entries in the akashic record for this lifetime, after all. But you will no doubt uh, you are on a mission to find wonderful people who you connect with, and uh, you will find them. You are destined to do so. So, on the seven, which is uh, your current position, your attitude within these circumstances, um, you are the Knight of Swords. There is the Knight of Swords, and he is charging ahead on his horse. He is a man of action. Um, he is the messenger who will get through the lines come rain or sleet or hail or snow as as the poem goes or is it the postal oath I don't know um let's see I'm sure it has a longer history than that so king of swords an active and determined person experienced authoritative controls commanding a professional man a highly analytical person, justness, force, superiority, a person having many ideas, thoughts, and designs. So this is a leader in industry. Congratulations! I, I think that that is your present position you find yourself in. You find yourself at this point, Virgo, um, with wonderful, wonderful influences in your life. So, oh, but then we have in your environment your influence on others and others' influences on you, things which are affecting your decisions right now, is the Three of Swords. And it is sadness. It is loss. I would say that someone passed away and you have to travel to their funeral or their bedside. Um, you're needing to make amends to them or have their love be there for them during their last time and this is just a time of sadness it is it is not something associated with your personal uh family your inner group your your home your um your uh females in your life at all this is just a time of sadness um three of swords i think it relates to the two of clubs and the unwanted message or, and the change of plans. Perhaps somebody is having a medical procedure done and you found out about it in the last minute and you really want to be there so you're traveling to their bedside and um, you, I, I'm definitely getting a feeling with that that you will get there in time, that you will not ha be delayed at all on your travels that they will be so happy, happy to see you. Just hold your hand. You don't have to worry about unpleasant conversations if you go. You just be there for them and hold their hand. That's all they need. 
and uh, whatever the outcome, uh, know that this will fix anything, any sadness, any, any hardship that has befallen you. This is a positive, wonderful mitzvah, miracle in your life. So this is what you should do. So, the Three of Swords. It is absence, sorrow, disappointment, strife. Removal, dispersion, diversion, the opposition, separation, and delay. So, um, if you've lost someone, then uh, spend your time remembering them in a positive light. Perhaps make some memorial that they would appreciate, that they would love. Um, remember them well. Um, and. Uh, uh, be with others, seek others out, do not be isolated at this time. If someone has appealed to you to be with them while they are sick or going through a crisis, then, um, you know, regardless of what is going on in your life, it shows that you will do this, you will be there for them, and that this will open up blessings for you. I am sorry that this is happening in your environment right now. Okay, or you're remembering someone you've lost. Now, in in your emotions right now, your inner emotions, your hopes, your hidden emotions, your secret desires, your fears, your anxieties, these are the lovers. There you go. That is a faded soulmate connection. That is a destined cosmic, karmic combining um, and it is the sun and the moon and uh, the universe coupling in this beautiful landscape dancing together so the lovers a couple is dressed in traditional peasant clothes the white kid and lamb symbolize in innocence and purity of feeling mountains and a tree entwined with a serpent signify possible difficulties. Above is a six-winged cherub, and I always think that six-winged cherub is a seraphim. So he has the, the flaming sword to, to have discernment. Now the snake I do not see as a bad thing. I think the snake is an indicator of knowledge, of, of yes, self-growth, the, the kundalini transformation process, um, but the snake is part of self-healing. It is part of the caddis symbol of medicine. It is it is found throughout cultures as an envoy of some amount of hidden knowledge or sacred knowledge, and that is exactly what happens when two souls with only the uh, most grounded and actualized intentions combine. So. With the lovers, it, in upright, it means love, beauty, perfection, harmony, trust, beginning of a romance, deep feeling, optimism, freedom of emotion. The necessity of testing or of subjecting to trial. Struggle between sacred and profane love. A meaningful affair. So, um, Virgo. You may pride yourself on your workmanship, on your craftsmanship, on your ability to focus on a job well done, on your health, on your self-improvement, on your minute details, um, and, and get through the dramas of life um, unscathed. But this says to me that you will uh, even through this time of sadness, in the midst of this environment of, of turmoil, uh, these dark political days perhaps, these are two people who understand and see eye to eye. They combine forces and they are united and they have a spiritual and sacred bond as spiritual destined siblings um, to guide uh, Gaia and the earth um, and the peoples of the earth into a higher plane of existence to actualize the fourth, fifth, 
and further dimensions within the microcosm as well as the macrocosm, so above, so below. But these are people who are also tempted by physicality. And it's a marvelous thing. That's a very good thing. We can't always have a platonic bond um, at all times. That is not necessarily the highest uh, divine love. So uh, these are people who are expressing themselves um, through their movements of their body. It doesn't need to be a one-on-one -on -one thing. It is a a, a way of expression, a, a communication that they share. So this is what I see. And then the final outcome. King of Cups. You have love going out. You are receiving love. You are in emotional, emotional wellspring. Um, especially at this time of Virgo and such power um, in the universe. Now I would like to say that the signs are 29 degrees different between Western and Eastern. And while I do know some about Eastern astrology, I'm reading in the West in English, so I'm going with Western sign placement. If you would like your Eastern consultations, I will probably work on the, a different series for those. So, um, and especially since we're using a Russian deck, Western signs. <laughs> we'll see you when I get some chakra cards, what I read with. Okay, so, <laughs> um, we've got the King of Cups. Yay! King of Cups. You're somebody who, who is, is really open to helping others, to receiving from others. This is somebody who has responsibility and creativity. A learned person, a professional, a businessman, a lawyer, a religious person, a scientist, a considerate person. That's always good. Kind and reliable, with a liberal manner. Artist, interest in the arts and sciences with generosity of spirit. So I think that considering that we've already indicated that you're a person who has a very stable pattern of living, you're a person who has experienced an amazing sacred transformation recently even, uh, not to say that that wasn't in your past, you also had destiny there, but uh, you may have some short-term troubles that are trying to make you very sad in your environment, yet you are a leader of industry and you are guided through these. Your hopes to couple or partner will be fulfilled in a perfect way, a planned way, an Akashic, destined, beautiful friendship. And you are the King of Cups, and you will move further into becoming and resonating as that King of Cups, that open wellspring of nurturing, divine emotion. Um, so, I hope that this reading has totally helped you and inspired you um, and blessed you. And I hope to see you very, very soon with my next set of readings. Uh, until then, Namaste, Sadnam, God bless, thank you. My name again is Dharamkar, and you can reach me at dharamkar23 at gmail.com. Uh, I take PayPal for a private reading. If you'd like to donate to the help make these videos, you can go to Patreon. Thanks so much. Have a great day.